As we talked about in the previous lesson, the Fabric Interconnect is actually the heart of the UCS system. The Fabric Interconnect handles all the data traffic, all the storage traffic, and then runs the management inside my architecture. The Fabric Interconnect determines how many chassis that I can support underneath the architecture as well because we connect the chassis up to the ports on the Fabric Interconnect. I can start, for instance, with a smaller Fabric Interconnect and then over time, if I need more ports, I can actually add ports to an expansion module or I can upgrade to a newer Fabric Interconnect with more ports to grow my system as needed. So I don't have to invest a bunch of money into it day one. I can slowly pay as I grow and get into a larger system. The Fabric Interconnects themselves are active, passive for the management, which means that the management is actually running active on one switch and passive on another. And if the management system goes down on one switch, then the other switch takes over. They have individual IP addresses and then share what we call a clustered IP address. So you connect to the virtual IP address or the clustered IP address and then the system manages the failover for you. This is helpful during upgrades in the fact that if I have to upgrade one side, I can fail over the other side and really nobody knows the difference while the upgrade's happening. I also have the ability to connect to my fabric interconnects through a transceiver or with a twin axe cable, which is very inexpensive. And I have the ability to upgrade and add expansion modules based on the need or connectivity requirements that I have for my UCS architecture. Because the fabric interconnects handle all the northbound connections for my network and for my storage. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. With UCS, when I first set up the system, I'm going to cable the Fabric Interconnect A and the Fabric Interconnect B together. And I'm actually going to do that over the ports here that I can see on the screen in the middle left, and they're called the L1 and L2 ports. These ports handle the communication between the two Fabric Interconnects so they can tell when one goes down and they need to fail over. L1 on Fabric Interconnect A connects to L1 on Fabric Interconnect B, and L2 on Fabric Interconnect A connects to L2 on Fabric Interconnect B, and that forms my clustered configuration. From that point on, if I want to attach servers and a chassis to my Fabric Interconnects, I simply cable them based on the amount of bandwidth I need. All of my chassis don't need to be cabled the same, so I can manage the number of ports I need on the Fabric Interconnects based on how I cable my chassis. So for instance, the chassis on the left is going to require two links. The next chassis to the right, I'm going to cable with four links, and so on and so forth. So I can have a very high performance chassis all the way to the right versus just general workloads that may exist in the chassis all the way to the left. And as you can see, the chassis are completely redundant in the fact that some of the connections go to the top fabric interconnect and some of the connections go to the bottom fabric interconnect. And that cabling needs to be maintained through the, all the chassis in your environment. So for instance, if I'm running a cable from the left fabric extender or I.O. module on the chassis all the way to the left to the top fabric interconnect, and the one on the right to the bottom fabric interconnect, I'm going to want to do the same thing on every chassis that I cable up. When I look at connecting storage to my UCS system, it's very easy to do. I can plug in either fiber channel or FCOE cables into my fabric interconnects, and I can run what we would call a storage port between the fabric interconnects and the storage area network. The same thing goes with the local area network or the data center LAN. I can do that based on the type of connectivity that I need or the amount of bandwidth that I need. So for instance, I could connect at 1 gig or 10 gig redundantly up to the local area network. Obviously, depending upon how I'm cabling my servers, if I connect a single 1 gig connection to the LAN or connect a single 2 gig connection, to the SAN, I may create a bottleneck. So I want to be sure to have enough bandwidth going northbound so I don't create a bottleneck for my servers. But I can use both fabric interconnects to talk to the LAN or the SAN at any time. And I can 
in most cases, port channel those connections to the LAN or the SAN to create a single logical link that looks like quite a bit of bandwidth. And if I need more bandwidth, I can add another link to that logical link. On top of that, I can actually connect certain types of storage devices directly to the fabric interconnect. So in some cases, I may not even need the storage connections all the way to the right. I may just connect my storage devices directly to the fabric interconnects. So that's how our blade server chassis connect to the fabric interconnects. Let's take a look at how our rack mount chassis connect. Well, they can do it in two different ways. For instance, I can direct attach the server via two links, one to each fabric interconnect, and then I can use the same management system to manage that server. Now that gives me the most performance, but it doesn't necessarily give me the best use of the ports on my fabric interconnect. They actually become very expensive as I consume them. What I can actually do is use a Nexus 2000, or once again a fabric extender, and this is just a bigger version of those I.O. ports that are in the chassis, and I can scale out my fabric interconnects by having two uplinks that go into the fabric interconnects and then switch with a bunch of ports for me to be able to attach my servers to. Once again, I want to be careful with bandwidth because all the servers that are connecting to those fexes are only going over those four uplinks on the right. So I want to make sure that my uplinks can support the amount of bandwidth that my servers are demanding. But in most cases, most customers use this type of configuration to get the most amount of scale for their money. So once again, these are our 6200 series fabric interconnects, and there have been a previous series, the 6100 series fabric interconnects. Now there's the 6200 series fabric interconnects, and there will always be newer and latest and greatest ones coming out. So I encourage you to go take a look at the Cisco website to see what the newest and latest products are that are coming out, the newest expansion modules, the newest servers with the newest processor, and the fastest memory, but the architecture stays the same and those fabric interconnects are the heart of the architecture. So please join me for the next lesson, 4.10 Power Redundancy Modes.